Some doctor's surgeries, they have a snotty receptionist. I'm sure you've met them all. When I lived in Somerset at Street, down in Somerset, I, uh, one Saturday morning, went down to the local surgery, wanted an appointment, and the woman there used to look over the top of the glasses at, at me. Yes? I said, well, I'd like to see a doctor. He said, have you got an appointment? I says, no. I'm sorry, you can't see a doctor. You should make an appointment. I says, I've been away driving trucks all week. She says, she says well, you... You could have phoned. I said, I've been working in France all week. And of course, at that time, I hadn't got a mobile phone. I said, I couldn't afford to phone from France. And uh, she says, well, sorry, you can't see a doctor. I said, well, I don't feel feel very well at all. I really do need to see a doctor. She says, why? What's the matter with you? I says, that's for the doctor to decide, not you. And of course, people behind me in the queue started laughing. She didn't like that. And uh, another lady said to her, give him an appointment, give him an appointment. She gave me one. And every time I went in the surgery after that, this woman glared at me and they used to say, good morning, lovely morning, or good morning, nasty day. I tried to be as pleasant and polite as I could because I knew she didn't like me. And I remember one morning on the Sunset Moors, uh, this lady said to me, it was January, awful day. She says, isn't the weather awful? I said, what do you expect in January, a bloody heat wave? She says, I'm very sorry, I wish you never spoke. <laughs> well, you know, people say that, don't they? On a very cold winter's morning, they'll say, ooh, the weather's awful. Well, I mean, what do they expect in January? Some people, stupid. I had a giant sneeze on my last upload, and uh, I was at my daughter's one day with my ex-wife Christine, and I sat behind Christine, and she was talking to my daughter Anne, and I got the tickle in my nose, and I sat there, Joe! She went, ah! you bloody idiot, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Said, well, I'm sorry, I only sneezed. She said, well, can you? Give me some warning. Most people, when they sneeze, they go, uh, 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 so we hear well, I don't. And, uh, she says, when you sneeze, everybody knows. Well, they all came down to see me, because I, I weren't on the continent all the time. They used to give me uh, local work. And, uh, the family, my son in law David, used to say to her, um, my son and old David up here, he used to say to my daughter, Anne, let's go down and see your dad for a few days. Are you coming, Christine? Yeah, so they all piled in the car. He, he never let me know. I used to answer the door. Hi, Dad, come stay with you for a few days. Hey? Oh, nice to see you as well, Dad. I said, oh my God, I'd only got one bedroom, but we brought all the bedding down. And put camp bed up in the bedroom, the sofa on the lounge floor. And uh, one afternoon, it was nice to see the family, you know, I suppose. And one afternoon, Christine decided to have a sleep on the bed. And when she woke up, she heard organ music. <laughs> she says, God, I thought I was in heaven. I says, Well, you're not going there. There's only one place you're ready. She says, Yeah, if you don't get there before me. And answered jokingly, now come on, mummy and daddy, don't start arguing. <laughs> and, uh, Christine, I, have, I, remember it, I remember it was very hot, and I got the windows wide open, and Christine were looking out the window at the allotments and the green grass overlooking the famous Glastonbury Tour. And, uh, there was a cat on one of the allotments, and of course, I was behind her in the kitchen, got the tickle in my nose again, and of course, a giant sneeze. Joe, the chef, that fucking cat ran. <laughs> the cat, it was about four or five allotments down. <laughs> she said, it not I've never, I've never seen a cat moose pass. And, uh, you know, I was reading the bingo numbers out the other day. But I can't, of course, I can't remember exactly what the numbers were. It was something like four and two, I'm going to sneeze. Forty-two, three, and one, two, thirty-one. <laughs> the women said, "Oh God, 
all the papers are flying off the table. And uh, that's it. You know, I get the ticket. I get the tickle in my nose, and I'll never ever go <laughs> like some people do. And one of the old women in the corner, Evelyn, when she sneezes, all he hears, "Choo!" <laughs> and the women says, "Well, at least she's not as noisy as you." I said, "Oh, you know, I've got a big gob." And so, "Yeah, you certainly have." But these, of course, sinus trouble—you can't have it cleared, you know. But shove something up your nose, it goes right up into your forehead. And it clears all the guns out, and it's not nice. And uh, I would go in for it if I thought it would cure me, but the reckon people that's had it done, it's, uh, it's awful when they shove them things right up the nasal passage. That magician, Darren Brown, he gets a nail, don't he? He shoves it right up in, inside his nose because he's going up the, in, up the sinus passages. And uh, if I thought it would clear it, I'd go in for it. But apparently, from what I've been told, people that's had this, or the nasty thing done to him, uh, it doesn't, it's allowed to come back. So I just put up with it. It's sneezing, but it's not just hay fever. I sneeze all year round anyway, but particularly so at this time of the year with hay fever around. So I shall, so I'm always, you know, I'm not picking my nose, I'm always itchy. And, uh, I do tend to sneeze when I sneeze. Everybody is it. <laughs> so uh, I've got a lot of light on me because it's now quarter to one in the morning. But I, I've got, I mean, I've got more lights in here than fucking Blackpool Illuminations. When Andrew gave up his flat, he moved everything in here. This large is hardly enough room. Oh, yeah, I had I used to have friends down in Falmouth. And I was telling them once about uh, the flat out down there. It was the same. I said, oh, they were, and they were very big cat lovers. Oh, did they love their cats? I was on about my place. No. I had Andrew living with me down there. I said, oh, my place is hardly enough for him to, sw to swing a cat round. Swing a cat round? <laughs> we wouldn't dream of doing such a... I said, it's just an expression. Come on. Yeah, but anyway, I better go to bed now, wash them bleeding pots, but I think I'll go outside for a last fag before I go to bed. Hmm. People are arguing with me about my last upload and the fact that the, uh, the atmosphere is shrinking. Well, I suggest to people that you watch the short daily uploads by the YouTube user called Suspicious Observers, one word. He does uh, short daily uploads, and he's been on about this uh, earth shrink, and he's, he, he's been on about it for a long time. He says we really do need the sunspots to explode, and it uh, will increase the earth's atmosphere, something like that. It, it can be rather technical. Uh, eggnog watches on, I know Gollum does. I don't know what's happened to him. And uh, he talks with great authority, but he just gets rather technical. But I listen every day. Yeah, because I've sus subscribed to him. So anyone that wants to argue with me about the fact that the Earth's atmosphere is shrinking, I do suggest that you watch the short daily uploads by the YouTube user called Suspicious Observers. Then you won't be arguing with me anymore. Right, I'm going to bed. I'll try being out of the fag. YouTube will probably say they can reduce the very bright light, but I'm not going to let it, no, because it makes me look a bit younger, <laughs> eyes all the wrinkles, yeah, <laughs> oh, God, I'm so vain, right, I'm going to bed, <laughs> good night.